Welcome everyone to today's presentation on war design for bending, presented on behalf of the Concrete Masonry Association of Australia. So just some background information before we begin. This presentation will go through relevant standards such as AS3700 masonry structures to determine block design considerations for bending. This presentation will also go through a worked example for a grouted, vertically reinforced concrete masonry wall. The main reinforcement in the direction of bending shall be spaced at centres of less than 2,000 mm, include an area of at least 100 mm squared, and be such that the reinforced bending moment capacity is greater than or equal to 1.2 times the unreinforced bending moment capacity. In members design for bending in two directions, the requirements for main tensile reinforcement shall be met for the reinforcement in each direction. The width of the compression phase of the reinforced masonry in bending shall be assumed to extend beyond the line of the tensile reinforcement. The cases for vertical and horizontal reinforcement differs and shall be taken as the minimum for the following values. The horizontal bending capacity shall be taken as the equation shown, where phi is the capacity reduction factor, FSY, which is the design yield strength of the reinforcement, ASD, which is the area of the main tensile reinforcement, AST, which is the area of the fully anchored longitudinal reinforcement, D, which is the effective depth of the reinforced masonry member, F-M, which is the characteristic compressive strength of the masonry, and finally B, which is the width of the masonry member. We will now go through an example for designing a vertically reinforced concrete masonry wall. This example requires us to design a load-bearing wall with a total outer plane loading of 4 kPa. The wall is 2.7 meters high, made of standard concrete masonry units, using face shell bedding of M3 mortar. We will determine the horizontal bending capacity of the wall and check whether it is greater than the design loading. The height of the wall is 2.7 meters, with a spacing of 1 meter between each vertical reinforcement bar. Using a total outer plane loading of 4 kPa, the design bending moment is calculated to be 3.65 kN meters per core. The diagram on the right shows the tributary area of the design load, applicable to each reinforced core. The strength contributed by the steel reinforcement is calculated. The number of bars is 1 at 1 meter centers and the bar diameter is 16 millimeters. A cover of 87 millimeters is calculated for the steel bar which is greater than 15 millimeters as per clause 4.10 of AS3700. The characteristic yield strength of the steel is 500 megapascals. The characteristic compressive strength of the masonry is calculated to be 8.06 megapascals using the calculated values from tables 3.1 and 3.2. We will go through how these values are obtained in the next slide. The characteristic compressive strength of the masonry and the joint thickness factor are determined from tables 3.1 and 3.2 respectively. Using face shell bedding of M3 mortar with standard block units, we are able to determine the characteristic compressive strength of the masonry. F0 is the flange outstand and is provided by the reinforcement. It is taken as the minimum of 400 millimeters, two times the thickness of the unit or the length of the unit. Here, two times the thickness of the unit is used and the flange outstand is calculated to be 380 millimeters. The effective width of the compressive flange for horizontal bending is two times the flange outstand, which is calculated to be 760 millimeters. The effective depth is half the thickness of the unit, as the bar is centrally located in the core, which is calculated to be 95 millimeters. Using one steel bar with a bar diameter of 16 millimeters, the area of steel reinforcement is calculated and the maximum allowable area of steel reinforcement is also calculated. As the area of steel reinforcement is less than the maximum, we use 201.01 mm squared of steel reinforcement. Before the reinforced design bending capacity can be used, it first must satisfy the unreinforced masonry capacity check. Using a capacity reduction factor of 0.75, the vertical bending capacity is calculated to be 6.59 kN meters per core. The capacity of an unreinforced masonry wall equivalent is calculated to be 0.64 kN meters. 
the reinforced bending capacity is greater than 1.2 times the unreinforced bending capacity, and therefore satisfies the check. As the design bending moment of 3.65 kN per core is less than the capacity, this satisfies the criterion, and thus the vertically reinforced wall is okay for the given out of plane loading. Here is a design chart from our MA55 manual, which can be found on our CMAA website. To read this graph, anything below the tracing curve is deemed okay for use. Here, a 2.7 meter high wall using standard 190 millimeter thick blocks with centrally located 16 millimeter reinforcement bars spaced at one meter is okay for a design loading of 4 kPa. The association has also curated a design manual that provides some information on the design requirements for bending for concrete masonry. It contains a lot of useful information on design and construction requirements, and I highly encourage you guys to check it out. If you have any other questions regarding bending design, please don't hesitate to contact the association, and we will be more than happy to help you guys out. The association also offers a wide range of free resources available to the public, such as technical manuals, research papers, and case studies. The association also has a technical hotline where we can answer any of your brick or block related inquiries. Should you have any questions about the design and construction of brick or block, please feel free to give us a call on the technical hotline. This concludes today's presentation on war design for bending. Thank you for your time and we hope you enjoyed today's presentation.